Hi, welcome to my video about how to sort out the electrics in an MG ZR. Also applies to the newer uh, Rover 25s, I guess, as well. Uh, this car we bought had problems with the central locking, um, both doors. Somebody, some garage had attempted to fix it without really knowing what the cause was. Uh, the cause is a uh, simple issue caused by a batch of relays that are unreliable called uh, Pectron relays that are in the um, uh, body control or system control unit and you can buy replacement relays on eBay so search for the word uh, Pectron and the relays I've got four of them here I've already replaced two of them in the unit uh, a while back and now the uh, problems we've got are with the uh, horn um, and the driver's uh, electric window. So you can see with the instructions that come with these relays, functions that these relays control, you can see a picture of them on the board, the central locking, which is the ones I've already changed, and super locking, again, already changed that one. Um, it also controls the intermittent front wiper, controls the, controls the driver's electric window, screen washer pumps, rig fog lights, and horn. And this time the horn has gone. So I'm going to replace the remaining uh, relays. The only difficulty is with actually getting to the unit because the uh, electronic box that contains the relays is right up behind the uh, passenger um, uh, dashboard uh, side. And this car, which has air conditioning, um, it's sandwiched between air conditioning, um, evaporator, or um, radiator, whatever you call it, and the body. And we have to remove the glove box and the pollen filter and try and wiggle out the evaporator away from the body, um, which rhythm requires loosen up some of the pipes. So we have to get into Zoom back and see if we can see it a little bit. The air conditioning pipes that go in here and go through the bulkhead. These have to um, have a little bit of slack on them so that they can move that way. So the actual evaporator radiator or the air conditioning can uh, move away sufficiently far to give us some clearance. So the first thing to do is we'll just undo these two bolts uh, which, can, which uh, hold the expansion tank and might be another one at the bottom. We'll soon see that. We'll move that out of the way. Um, we can then see the pipes that go um, from through from the air conditioning through the bulkhead. And um, I think we have to loosen up you know, one of the pipes connects over to the engine as well to give us a bit more clearance. So we'll see that in a minute. So in order to get to the bracket that holds this air conditioning pipe in place, we need to undo the two bolts that hold the air filter box in place, hopefully lift that out of the way. Would be easier if we remove the battery, but um, I think you can do it um, without doing that. And you can see here we've moved the expansion bottle out of the way. And this is the bit that has to move through the bodywork a bit more. You lose this grommet, the difficult thing is getting this grommet to come back to cover the body afterwards, um, but it is uh, possible with a little bit of practice and patience. Also disconnect the battery. Alright that's the two bolts undone. The air filter box is now loose. That's just held by the piece of plastic coming in um, from the tube where it joins in the air. And it's just held in by uh, clips so it makes, just makes it a little bit difficult to remove. Uh, so it's just the ring against the piece of plastic on one side to loose it from one of the clips, difficult to do it one handed, and then get it to the other side and lever it back to push this piece of plastic out through the air filter box. Should then be able to remove the bottom part of the air filter box. Alright, that's the air filter box removed, and now we can get to the nut bolts rather that holds the air conditioning pipe in place, so just need to slacken that off, probably remove it all together would be best to give this a little bit more 
um, freedom of movement so that this bit can go through the bodywork just a little bit more to give us some clearance to remove the uh, control unit. Okay, next remove the glove box. Easiest way to do that is where two screws bolts down here. Down there. off and what we've got to do is loosen up this whole unit so this bracket's got to come off bolt there and now it's just a clip over that side and basically difficult to see here Well, basically the unit is uh, right at the back there, we'll see that in a minute. So next to remove this crossbar. Then remove the pollen filter, it's held by a catch on the bottom there. Change that at the same time as well, because as you can see, it's horrible and lucky. to remove, after undoing the bolt at the top, this band that joins the evaporator into the centre console and we've already removed the band that joins the evaporator onto the fan unit and then we have to slacken up the bolts that hold the evaporator unit onto the bodywork let's just let's see if we can see those and another one down right in the footwell. This whole unit then we need to try and pry it away from the bodywork to come this way. And there's the unit. A serial number on it. So we've got to work out is how to get that out of there. So at this point I just have to pause the video because it's difficult to do the job and video record it at the same time. And this is actually the most difficult part of the job is uh, manoeuvring the box um, out from behind the evaporator. The trick is to get a partner to um, push on the air conditioning pipes in the engine bay, push them in towards the bulkhead. At the same time as your left hand you try and pull the evaporator away from the bulkhead giving you just about sufficient uh, space to unclip the uh, electronic control unit module which we see here is that plastic box with a label on it um, it's normally held in by a metal band so you have to unclip that bend back the metal band towards the bulkhead uh, that, and that allows you to manoeuvre the um, control box, the plastic box um, over the metal band and um, over a little um, stud that is used to hold the evaporator onto the bodywork and you have to pull back the evaporator enough so there's a small gap between the evaporator and that stud. Um, you then should be able to pull back the um, electronic uh, box um, down and round and out and the uh, towards the bottom of the passenger footwell uh, at which point you'll be able to also disconnect all the wires. Don't try and disconnect all the wires before you pull the unit out because I think that's going to be impossible. So we'll see uh, where we've got to with the unit removed um, in the next stage in a minute. Now you can see how much we've had to prise the evaporator out away from the bulkhead by how much space there is here between the fan unit and the evaporator unit. Pipes are still connected by the way, it's just a matter of leaving it out enough 
So you can then get underneath, unclip it, and lever this unit out the bottom where you can disconnect the four connectors. So there's the four connectors and all plugged from here. Um, these in that sort of position up behind the evaporator. Very tight and very difficult, so be patient. Try not to damage it too much. It helps to bend one of the metal brackets. There's a metal strap that holds it in place across this with a piece of metal sticking up here. Helps to bend that piece of metal flat against the bulkhead uh, after you've disconnected it from the top piece. Um, by bending it flat, you get more clearance to wiggle it out from underneath the bulkhead and get it out. Um, then we take the plastic cover off and start desoldering the relays. So here you can see we've removed the case. Here's the board. See two of the relays I replaced last time. Should have changed the rest of them at the same time, but they were working at that time. Subsequently packed up. Here's the replacement ones. Same size. Uh, slightly difficult job is uh, desoldering um, with sufficient heat so that you actually leave a hole in the board through which to get the new relay and without destroying the PCB in the process. Uh, desoldering uh, tool, one of these, is very useful. Goes for desoldering pump. Pump it up and then uh, when you're ready, heat up the solder, press the button and it sucks up the solder out of the way. And we need a hot temperature soldering arm, so we've got a temperature control one. I think we'll leave the uh, big tip on it because that will be uh, most useful for getting a lot of heat onto the joints. So we'll try that next. Okay, heat it up, put the desoldering arm on the top, suck up the solder. And ideally you want it like that so that it sucks out all the solder and leaves a little hole where the wire is uh, poking through. More difficult on these ones where you've got a lot of metal around the joint. We need to get it's very hot. Pop that over the top. More difficult because leave some of the solder behind. Where there is some solder left behind, might have to just lever out the relay while heating around the remaining joints that still have solder on. Ones that don't have so much solder, like this one, normally go a little bit better. One of the tricks to uh, removing your relays is to apply a little bit of leverage onto them. You don't want to place a screwdriver between the board and the relay because you might damage the board. But since the relay is going to be replaced anyhow, jam a little hole in the side of the relay, insert the screwdriver and apply a little bit of leverage while heating the other side with a soldering iron and then you should see very small movements in the legs as they start to gradually move through the board. So for these last two it helps to lever each one against the other while at the same time desoldering any stubborn joints underneath after you've applied this solder sucker. And I also found that it helps to Loosen up each connection by grabbing hold of the small bit of wire poking through. Give it a twist to try and dislodge it from the, uh, the solder and the hole around either side. It just weakens the joint and helps to lever it out. So you can see we've got uh, one out, two are now loose. Wiggle to loosen up all the joints. That one's out. One of the problems is uh, cleaning up the holes. That one actually is not too bad and with quite good holes, but uh, this one over here is probably going to require some solder sucking out of the hole and it probably helps to uh, get somebody to hold the board and hold the solder sucker at one side while applying the soldering iron on the other side. And then, uh, while the solder is melted, applying the solder sucker. 
Right, there we go with the new relay fitted. These three all soldered up underneath again. Quite a tricky job. Helps to have uh, somebody holding the board while you use the solder sucker. Build it up like that and put the solder sucker on one side and soldering on the other. Uh, eventually managed to clear out all the holes, resolder the relays. So now it's a matter of putting it back in the case. I would recommend plugging it into the connectors on the car and testing it uh, before you hide it behind the dashboard in case there's any problems. So we'll do that next now, time. Now uh, we've got the unit back in. So just to show you the position again. This is the plastic unit in its correct position. I haven't bothered with the clamps around it because it's held fairly tightly by all of the carpet and the air conditioning unit. Um, so just about to put the metal brackets back on again. Uh, that needs to clip underneath, which it hasn't done. So I need to redo that, but I'll do that in a minute. And uh, basically we did plug it in first and test all of the car electric systems. So test the driver's door, the intermittent wash wipe, the central locking door locks and the horn. And now they're all working again. So uh, reassembly is straightforward, reverse all of what we've done so far. Just a matter of putting all these clips and things back on again. And take the uh, moment to also put a, a new pollen filter in. Alright, thanks for watching.